Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step off. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this right here is Tom Clark's main event. What's up, kids? Welcome back to the program. Happy Friday to you. That's right. The watch works this week. It's not Thursday. Aren't you happy? It is the end of the week. We hope you've had a great week. Hope all is going well for you. I had to reset the PC, and every time I do that, the light is never right. There we go. Is that better? I don't look quite as angelic. (laughs) Not quite as glowy as I am before. I'm pasty white. If this is not proof to you that I'm pasty white. Some people go in the sun and everything goes well. Not me. Burn to a crisp, Jack. That's how it goes for me in my life. Uh, Burn to a crisp. Uh, SPF, uh, sunblock SPF uh, 109 or whatever it is because I can't, I can't do it, dude. I can't do it. Let's say some hellos before we get underway. Chris Sims, what's up, my friend? Guten Tag to you, Sandy, in Germany. How you doing? Carlos Martinez, what's going on? Sugar Shane Odom, welcome back to the program. Jamel Fisher, what's up in Vegas? Ryan, everything's going good, my friend. Hope you are. Belinda, happy belated birthday to you. Uh, Sandy's wearing his Tom Clark merch. Uh, Sandy. You are good people. One day they will uh, write songs and build statues of you, my friend. Um, Elvis Martinez, what's going on? Kathleen, welcome to the show. Have you ever watched before? Thanks for hanging out. Soundbite Shannon is here. Everybody say hello to Shannon. Uh, Let's see. What else is going on here today, kids? What's up, Chad? Uh, What's up, Tony? Flair going to AEW. It could be. It could be. We'll get into it. What's up, Molly? Thank you for checking out the show. Hope everyone out there is doing great. Um, Fat Boy Qualls. Am I reading that right? Shout out all the way from Ohio. Hello in Ohio. This is Tom in North Carolina. Eric, what's going on, my friend? Thank you for hanging out, of course. Sandy's asking for a button. What button are you looking for? What button is it you want to hear? All right. Um. We'll get to some buttons here uh, shortly, I'm sure. Before we go any farther, let's bring on my guest for this week. You know him from Bleacher Report. You know him from various Twitter wars, of which he's always the instigator. Don't let him tell you any different. But you also know him from Tom Clark's 6 m Podcast. Kids, welcome back to the show, Mr. Phil Lindsay. Phil, what's up, my friend? How's it going today, man? Good. How are you? Awesome. Doing great, dude. Doing great. Let's get some uh, hey, hey going here. Bam, there we are. Okay. Um, there we go. There we go. Off to the side. <laughs> yep. Uh, things work, baby. When things work, I'm so happy. So there we are. Phil, how's your week been, dude? You've been busy this week with the pro wrestling stuff on the Twitter machine, or what? Uh, it's been a little bit of a busy one. Um, kind of. I don't know. Not as jam packed as last week. It seemed like last week we had a lot of stuff to talk about. And this week we still do, but not quite as much. So. By the way, kids, if you've not shared the show, please go do so now. I would very much appreciate it. I'm sharing it on Twitter as we speak. Um, Let's see. I'll tag you there, Phil. And usually I have this ready before we go live. However, I did not have it ready this time. So (laughs) there we go. I was behind. I was actually busy watching some videos, catching up on a few things. So, yeah, everyone just be patient. I'm doing my thing here. Yes. And there we go. Adjust my camera. Awesome. (laughs) We are posted. Everything's all good. Yes. So, again, hopefully all you uh, guys and gals out there have had a great week. We do have some stuff to hit on this week, stuff to talk about. Thank you, Sandy, for sharing the show. If everybody, listen, from the jump, there's 42 of you. Rock on, Jack. If all of you would hit the thumbs up and the big old heart button, how is it people do that nonsense? There we go. It's so pretty. <laughs> I don't. I get so tired of that, but it's whatever. By the way, I've been uh, 
uh, uh, riding my fingers to the bone for the past couple of days. I got the itch. I got to scratch it. So maybe this means Tom's getting back on the horse. We shall see, kids. Um, I never call it until I know for sure. So please go check me out. And of course, you can find Mr. Lindsay on Bleacher Report. Are you still on Daily DDT, by the way? Yes. Awesome. I haven't written there in years. I had a good experience with them. It was nothing negative. I think I, I can't remember why I stopped contributing to them. I think I just got busy with other things. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, so yes, we, um, uh, Toby says Phil's taking over the main event. There you go. Phil Lindsay's main event. It doesn't quite have the ring, but, uh, no, it's all good. I keep encouraging this man to do go. Everybody here needs to encourage Phil to do his own pod. I think it would be awesome. Hey, Jamel, thank you for the kind words about the article on Bray. I promise you we're going to get to Mr. Wyatt, or should I say Mr. Rotunda, in all short order. Um, Let's talk a little bit about podcast stuff. If you guys, I'm not going to show you the page. Tinyurl.com slash Tom Clark Pods, P-O-D-S. A bunch of you have bought shirts and whatnot. I appreciate it. Here's the shirt. They've got good quality merch on redbubble.com. I promise you it's good stuff. Uh, the cup is pretty awesome. There's a whole bunch of stuff with the logos on it. Please go check it out. If you're a fan of the 6M podcast, which, by the way, the two gentlemen you see on your screen right now work very hard to make it an entertaining show. We hope you guys dig it. I've been putting a little bit of something something behind it to try to advertise it because I, I I like this show. I've always said, Phil, I want to do the kind of pods that I myself would like to listen to. I listen to my own stuff. It's not an ego thing for me either. It's just – especially when I got guests on, I just enjoy the content. I, again, I want to make the kind of stuff that I would want to hear. So there's a quick plug for the merch. Um, let's kick off the show. It's kind of a somber note, but we can celebrate the man's career here. Beautiful Bobby Eaton passed away this week. Phil, he was only 62, which as the older you get, the more you know that 62 is not very old in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Um, so the, when you were growing up, because uh, you know, I know you're in Chicago, which was Jim Crockett country as well. Um, did you grow up like a WWE fan, just WWE? Were you aware of NWA or what did you grow up watching? Uh, yeah, I was mostly a WWE kid growing up. I wasn't much into smaller promotions. Um, you know, I knew of Bobby, but yeah, I can't say that I follow, um, NWA. Uh, Bobby, a, a very accomplished tag team wrestler. Uh, uh, everybody in the business that knew him and worked with him said he was so easy to work and incredibly smart and crazy talented. Um, if no one is familiar with his work in the Dangerous Alliance, go check it out. That's a very underrated faction, uh, one of Paul Heyman's best, in my opinion. And, of course, with the Midnight Express, with Jim before Jim went wackadoodle. Um, uh, of course, Bobby Teen with uh, first with uh, Loverboy Dennis and then Sweet Stan. As the Midnight Express, the feuds with Rock and Roll Express, Legion of Doom, uh, all very classic stuff. Uh, a lot of feuds with that team. Uh, the Horsemen, the Fantastics, uh, big time feuds. So, yeah, um, uh, shame to hear it. Uh, of course, deepest condolences and well wishes out to the family, friends, and fans of beautiful Bobby Eaton. Got some great comments going on in the chat. Um, I can't appreciate how over the Rock and Roll Express were until you go back and watch clips, and especially against the Midnights. They were uh, in a class all their own. So, yeah, all the best to uh, Bobby's family. He's been going through some medical stuff and some physical issues over the past couple of years, and I guess everything just eventually caught up to him. So, I hate to hear it. Let's get to some other news this week, kids. Bray Wyatt, uh, the man whose real name, Wyndham Rotunda. Um, Bray has been released. Um, I feel, I think I was the one that sent it to our group chat on Twitter first. Uh, and, and I think, uh, uh, the reaction from everybody online was what we were all extremely shocked by this dude. Could you have imagined this coming at least right now? Uh, no, um, Bray is definitely one of their most popular stars. Well, was one of their most popular stars. Uh, yeah, this was, uh, this came out of nowhere. I, I just don't know what to make of it. I mean, he's one of the most, and I don't think, kids, you don't need us to tell you this. He's one of the most creative guys that company's ever seen. He didn't need promos handed to him. He didn't need really any help. He was extremely creative. The whole Fiend concept, I believe, was his creation, as was the Wyatt family concept. It was all him. You know, if again, kids, if they, you know, they gave you chicken salad or you know, make, you know, well, how's the saying go? Give you chicken, make salad, or make something else, right? So he always made the best of the situation. He knew who he was. He knows who he is. Uh, Phil, everybody's assuming he's going to Tony Khan's company. Are we going to see Wyndham Rotunda in all elite wrestling? Um, possibly. 
I don't know. I personally would like to see him go somewhere where he could be like a main guy. And I'm not sure he'll be able to do that at AEW because there's so many people there. Um, yeah, I mean, somewhere like Impact where he could do like his, you know, supernatural stuff and he could be like a main feature on a car would be great, in my opinion. But who knows? I don't know. Is that roster too heavy right now, you think? AWs? For yeah, for him to break through, really? Yeah, I mean, because they're getting a lot of guys. We're talking about getting Punk soon. Uh, we're talking about getting Brian possibly soon. Yeah, and I mean, that's not counting everybody they have. They're guys that could be in the main card, main event card right now, and they're not. So I don't know. I feel like if he goes there, he's going to have a tough time, you know, kind of ascending to the top. And then I don't know if it fits his style either because, you know, AEW doesn't do a whole lot of supernatural stuff. The Abaddon. That they do the Abaddon yeah. stick. Dude, she's creepy as all get. I'm going to tell you right now, I know it's just makeup and stuff. Man, she's hard to look at. It's so well done, dude. It's so well done. Um, Robbie uh, asked the question, if if Bray is gone, why is Alexa hanging on to a concept that was tied to the thing? Because she's being told to. Um, she's playing her part, kids. Um, you guys you guys and gals know this, but I'll give you a general reminder. In that company, you're going to do what you're told to do. You can object. You can push back. I'm sure you can be as professional as you can be. A lot of these men and women know that the harder they push back, the chances are there's a possibility you might just not be given anything else to do. That's not to say I'm not suggesting they're a vindictive company and they're out to cut the throats of their own talent. I'm not giving you conspiracy stuff, but I'm also not giving anything you've never heard before. Um, if you push back too hard, you might you might not like what you're told. So that's what I'll give you on that. Um, Toby yeah. pointing out, and also, Phil, I'm, I don't know if you've noticed, but on Bray's social media, he's got the cult of Wyndham. So that could be what we're looking at. There you go. Yeah, possibly. Um, I, he's going to land on his feet. He's one, of the, he's one of the most creative guys in wrestling. Um, he'll figure out a way to reinvent himself and do something great. Yeah, I agree with that. Eric says with with Flair, uh, Rick, I'm sure he's saying, potentially coming to AW, does Charlotte follow, especially with Andrade already in? I, first of all, Rick didn't burn any bridges with that company. He made sure to go out and release this statement, which had people raising their eyebrows. I don't know why people get so weird over stuff. All he did was he wanted to make sure, and this is nothing, this is not to reflect on Rick personally. You don't bite the hand that feeds. He has no bridges to burn and he has nothing bad to say. So why not just come out? Listen, this is nothing personal. We just have a difference of opinion. Why not take control of your own narrative, Phil? Don't let the company speak for you. I think you did fine with that statement. Yeah, I mean, Rick's, Rick's been around a bin. He knows. <laughs> he knows not to burn a bridge, especially with someone as big as WWE, because you're going to have to come back through them at some point. Mm -hmm. um, even if he doesn't plan on going back there, you still have a daughter that works there. So, of course, you're not going to burn a bridge. Of course, yeah. And I would say that, and, and I'm just guessing here, I'm just speculating, folks, but I would say that Charlotte's probably pretty happy with what she's doing. I mean, Rick's making it sound like it's not a big deal, and if they had done him wrong, I would say she'd be unhappy too, but I just don't know if I see that. Plus, you know, his life is not her life and vice versa, so we'll see. Um, Alma's asking about uh, Cody Malachi Black. I promise you, Alma, we'll get there. Uh, no worries. It's on the docket of topics to talk about here today. Um, yeah, we're we're gonna wait and see how all this unfolds. I always advise you, you folks out there, to please just be patient as much as you can. I know it's hard to be patient with this company, right? But we'll see how everything unfolds. Um, what else we got going on this week, kids? If you've not heard the news, here's you some news right here. Allegiant Stadium is requiring mass for SummerSlam. Um, I don't know what I expected here, Phil, if I expected them to ask for vaccination cards, which I don't know if they can do that uh, for, for HIPAA regulations and all that. I don't know how that works really with, uh, with an entertainment show. It's not like a place of business where you go work or you're going to go shop. But um, what's your take on this uh, uh, for upcoming SummerSlam event? Um, well, I mean, you know, this is just uh, precautions. I mean, uh, there's going to be a lot of people in Vegas that weekend, both for SummerSlam and for the fight. So, yeah, I understand it. Um, I think people should be wearing a mask anyway. So, <laughs> I don't know. Just 
cover your bases. Uh, if you require it, then, you know, people can't, you know, feign ignorance. Very true. Yeah. If you say it up front, they can't just show up and claim, well, we didn't know, or it's, you know, it's getting my rights or whatever. That's such nonsense. People scream about people are so dumb. I don't care. It's my show. I don't care what anybody thinks. Um, yeah, I just, I don't understand the idea of not. Oh, Sandy says we're a Tom. Listen, the option is there on Redbubble and I've not published it. You know what? I think I'm going to publish the freaking thing. So if anybody wants a mask with the logo on it, you can freaking get you one. And then wear that sucker in style. I should just make the mask that says hot garbage and just people can walk <laughs> around with the words hot garbage all over the face. So that would elicit some questions, I'm sure. Toby says it won't hurt the crowd noise. They pipe it in anyway. There you go. <laughs> That's um, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was at Raw on Monday. Heard quite a few stories um, online about. I, I did forget that you were at Raw. I've got Raw on the uh, on the docket here for you to. Uh, oh, we've lost you. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Sorry, I'm here. There we go. No worries. We had that issue last night doing the 6M, too. God, do you ever sleep? You look like you're half asleep. Kids, welcome the boy to the show with his Easy E t-shirt on. Till four in the morning? Good Lord, kid. That's, those days are going to be over when you get back to school. This is, this is a sidebar, folks, but I took this kid to the trampoline park down here, and he heard one of the dads... Uh, what was it that dad said to his kid or said, said to somebody? He said, like, what you know about Easy E? He said, what you know, what's that kid know about Easy E? Just like where Wesley couldn't hear him. Wesley, like, I totally <laughs> heard him. I don't advise my kid to talk to strangers. Otherwise, he would have went up to him and said, I know who Easy E is. So there you go. Uh, oh, hey, Ray's asking if you like Meat Mill. He's okay. He's okay, he says. <laughs> and he's gone. So there you go. Um, yeah, I I forgot you were at Raw on Monday, and we're going to talk about Raw, but could you hear, could, I mean, because Goldberg Chance, we've always heard through the years, yeah, it's a lot of the crowd, but is it piped in? Could you tell anything happening? Oh, yeah, it was definitely loud, um, Goldberg cheers. You know, I I don't expect him to not get cheers at shows because, you know, things, and, you know, it is what it is, especially the Chicago crowd. The Chicago crowd wants to chant things, so. Um, there were definitely other parts of the show that I was told start, certain things were chanted and it was so quiet in the arena. So, <laughs> Well, as Shannon points out here, the crowd, they were muting the crowd a lot. I could totally tell yes, that. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. <laughs> what do you make? And you know what? We'll get there. I, I, it's on the docket to talk about, so we'll get there. It's on the list. It's on the list. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, Bill, Bill and Bob going to go do some stuff in a 20 by 20 real soon, kids. Um, how did it come off in person? The two of them facing off. Did it feel legit? Does it feel like Bill hasn't missed a beat? He's all man. It's all main event powerhouse. It's, it's prime time kind of deal. And by the way, can we talk about how his son went from like this big to jacked up teenager like overnight i i didn't see that coming man what did you think about that whole spot with these two they didn't recognize his son at first i was like oh okay um yeah i mean the segment was fine um i feel like it's pretty much you know going through the motions at this point um i don't know i feel like we're all doing what we did before with drew and just going don't put the title on goldberg please don't put the title on goldberg please don't put the title on goldberg <laughs> You know, it's funny because Kofi's got a lot of fans, and he should. Uh, Drew, I mean, Drew still has a lot of fans, and he should. Do you think at some point, and I don't know if they even care about this, because, again, it doesn't really feed into the whole alpha male macho chest-beating gimmick that Goldberg has, and good on him. But do you think at some point it would make sense for Bill to maybe mention Kofi or mention Drew like, like as a sign of respect toward their characters in a promo? Would that help his cause any for people who think he's stepping past everybody else or would it even make a difference? I don't think it'll help. I think at this point, either if you like what they're doing with the Goldberg stuff or you're not, it, it what he says is going to change that. <laughs> Very true. Ray says Goldberg is 88 years old. He was sweating like a, like an animal. I mean, he's an older guy. What do you want? Elvis says, I want Goldberg to win. Dude, as we said, he's got a lot of fans out there. 
I mean, right. he does. <laughs> I mean, bless you. So what is, if he were to go over at SummerSlam, <coughs> bless you. Uh, if Thank he were you. to go over at uh, SummerSlam, uh, who's he dropping it to after the fact, you think? Where, where are they taking that? I don't know. Um, if, if Of course, if he wins, then do the Big E match. I mean, do that's Big E's dream match. That's that's the mm. that's the way to go. Yeah. But do we really need him as champion though? Like I feel like to give Bobby so much fanfare and to give him a decent run just to lose to Goldberg, eh, I don't really need to see that. And they've they've spent so much time giving him these uh <coughs> sorry, these sorry. squash no worries, the trifecta. They've spent so much time giving him his, these uh these squash matches and putting him over strong on TV all the time to get him to the point to face Bill as if Lashley versus Goldberg wasn't a big enough match, but they felt the need to take him to that point. Almost like we got to bring Bobby up to Goldberg's level. And I'm thinking, I think he was already at Goldberg's level. I don't know why you felt the need to make him an invincible monster. To me, he was kind of already there. So like you said, why do all that work? I wanted to have him drop it. And I'm always thinking or trying to think long term. My next question is always, what's the long game? What's the end of this? And I don't know who the next plausible person is after after Bill. I do you go back to Drew again? That doesn't make much sense. I mean No. <laughs> no. Uh, Sandy threw this out there. We heard we heard Riddle's name at one point because of the online stuff. Would they bring that to life? Do they care about the online stuff with Riddle and Goldberg? Riddle cares. Ah, uh, <laughs> good point. Riddle, Riddle is definitely caring. I don't know if the company cares. Good point. Keith, I didn't mean to leave you out. Goldberg should play some type of role in Lashley losing the title. The uh, Big E should cash in after Goldberg spears Lashley post-match after Lashley wins. I mean, they could take that that way if they want to. I think I think we're at least going to get a tease of a Big E cash in. If he doesn't cash in um, after the match or during the match or something, I think we're going to at least get a tease. Mm. Um, there's too much storyline there of him beating Kofi the way he did and, you know, beating Xavier the, the way he did before that. I think the story is of Big E coming back to avenge them. I like that story. Cherie says either give it to Big E, Riddle, or Cross. Cherie, all due respect, Karrion Cross might be in the same locker room as Bobby Lashley, but he's as close to that WWE title as I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. I call it like I see it. We'll get into that in a bit, too. Um, Yeah, I don't know how I feel about all that. It's a mess. Oh, speaking of which, guess what's next? Bam. Okay, so I, I love that you were there. I can put you on the spot. Did the crowd react the way you think they should have for Keith and for Carrie and both, or was it dulled for either one of them? There was no reaction for Carrie and Cross when he came out. I mean, there was no reaction. Um, the match was uh it was kind of uh it was kind of floundering until Keith Lee uh got his big comeback going and then the crowd started start getting into it. And then when he won, the crowd was over for Keith Lee, but Boy, Carrion is in a really weird position. I don't know what they're doing with him. Um, and it was so crazy because people were excited for Keith Lee to win this match. I think we just want anything good for Keith Lee at this moment. So I, that's why people were cheering. But I just don't know what this does for Cross. <laughs> uh, and for anybody keeping count at home, kids, uh, Cross is one and two on the main roster now. Not exactly a stellar win-loss record, folks. Um Still undefeated in NXT. I think that's going to change. Um, I just don't. I just don't see him. I, I don't know. I think he drops the title to Joe, and I think they put him on the main roster where he he proceeds to have 50-50 for the rest of his time in that company. I could be dead wrong. I've been wrong before. I'm not saying this is the word of God, as Tom says, and decrees up to heaven because I'm not that kind of commentary, and I never have been. So um, we shall see. Hold on, I'll be right back. No worries. Yes, folks, we shall see. What I do not think uh, uh, at any point, however, that Cross is going to become anything major. Not because he can't be, not because he shouldn't be, 
But to be honest with you, but because if for no other reason that WWE is not going to allow him to be, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. We'll see what's going on. Uh, let's see. We got Phil back. There you are. Oh. Yeah. There we go. No worries. Uh, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I just don't know why. Yeah, I could spend all day on this. I don't know why you've got a guy as talented as Cross is. And you're, it, is it as simple as Vince doesn't see it, and so we all go along with what he says? Is it really as simple as we've all been led to believe that Vince just doesn't see it? What do you think is going on? Oh, I don't know, man. It's weird. Uh, I We haven't seen an NXT champion come up like this and get kind of 50-50 like this, I don't think, ever. Um, so, and, and you would think he checks all the boxes. He's a big guy. Uh, he's got a great look. Um, I had that kick-ass entrance for a minute. Uh, I don't know. It's it's bizarre. Uh, I just don't know what we're supposed to take away from any of this. And this takes me right back to that old discussion slash argument slash, you know, white knuckling nonsense of is NXT developmental or are they a main roster show or a third brand or whatever? And, and this to me just, just discounts everything they do on that brand. It just makes it feel like it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything to me. If, if you liken this to a territory system, which I get it, that's not what, it, what this is. I understand. But if you were liking this to a territory system, then that means that the champ of the of this one territory, every time he goes away to defend or whatever, is getting beat. That does nothing for the territory he left behind. It doesn't strengthen him. It doesn't strengthen the guys. All it does is make him look cheap. And I, I just I can't wrap my head around it. If you wanted to bring him to the main roster and it's a – it's a DQ, it's a count out, it's a whatever. Okay, if Cross is still on his feet at the end, I'm okay with that. But he's on his back looking at the lights. That's weird. I, I don't – and plus, Phil, I think it makes the statement, well, listen, pal, main roster guys are that much better than those NXT guys. It does. I mean, if, if this uh, leads into the Adam Cole news this week, I could see why Adam Cole would not want to move up. Um, now, I don't, I don't know for a fact that those are his personal opinions, but if I'm looking at it from afar, I can see why he wanted to stay on NXT for a while and not come up. We just saw, I just saw last night that Finn is already saying he wants a third run on NXT. Wow. <laughs> so they, and we'll get into that here in a bit with Roman and everything. Cause I have no idea what they're doing there either. Um, yeah, if he's already on social media talking that stuff, then that tells you something. Um, by the way, kids, for everything we're just talking about, here's a button for you. Hot garbage. And Ray, <laughs> because because Phil brought up Cole, here you go, Ray. There we go. Um, yeah, it's it's a mess. As my mom would say, it's just a mess. Um Listen, you were there. Did you chant it? Oh, there CM was. Punk. There were uh, right before the show started. There were loud CM Punk chants, uh, and there were a few times throughout the show. Listen, you know, I'm never gonna say you know crowds should not come to shows and chant what they want, as long as we're not being vulgar or ridiculous. Um, hey, it was the day that the uh, tickets for Rampage went online. There's excitement for CM Punk to come back. It was unavoidable. They were going to be seeing punk chants. Um, but I think you I think you do yourself a disservice as a company when you don't give the fans anything interesting enough to not want to chant that during your show. Uh, the times that they did chant it, the crowd was bored. I mean, during the during the women's match with the Eve Marie stuff, uh, during that terrible Miz segment, um, and it was another point they chanted it. But those two points, those are two low parts in the show. Uh, let's see. Carlos says, uh, Adam Cole contract expires at SummerSlam. Reports that he has turned down offers from WWE. Carlos, I'll give you the same advice I give everybody here every week. Don't believe anything till you see it. We we can all hear rumors and hear. There's there's a site. I'm not going to say the name of the site. Daniel Bryan is signed with WWE or with AEW. And I'm like, 
okay, well, no, they've signed. He, the head, that's going to come. Uh, Daniel Bryan has signed. I'm like, how do you know? Well, they've signed. Source it. Give me a name. Can't do that. Then how do you, I mean, I don't know. I Again, I believe when I see it, if, if one or two sides says Daniel Bryan has signed, I need more than that, Phil. I need him to be on Dynamite. I need the company to acknowledge it. I need his name to show up on the roster page. I need more than he signed and we know it. That's not enough for me. I mean, he's probably going. I'm not saying he's not. But I need a whole lot more than just we said he's going, you should believe us. I just don't. Yeah, I mean, I won't say that it's a lock. But there's reason to believe he's signing. Sure. Um, it's just like there's reason to believe that Cole is leaving. I mean, there are certain things uh, that lead me in that direction. The fact that I have, haven't seen this man talk about going to the main roster once. I haven't heard him say he was excited about it. Uh, him saying that NXT is the main roster. Uh, the fact that after uh, Undisputed Era broke up, I didn't see where it looked like they had a plan other than being on NXT. I don't know, man. He can't stay on NXT forever. There's a ceiling for him on NXT. He has literally done everything there is to do there. He's been yeah. tag champion. He's been North American champion, longest reigning NXT champion. There is nothing left for him to do there. And so if that's just a plan, I can't see him going, I'm going to stay on NXT for the next year or so. And especially if his contract's up. Um, if the rumor's correct, his contract has been up since September. I think he's gone. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. We'll see. I think he's on. I do too. I, I think he's on the way out. And um, it's so funny because I think, was it last year we were talking about, well, Daniel's probably done in the ring. However, we're probably looking at, you know, he wants to be a, 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 a producer backstage. He loves that company is, you know, that they made him a star and all this other stuff. But you and I would have conversations as I'm sure a lot of fans did about, Oh my God! I can imagine him in, in 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 New Japan with Suzuki. I can imagine him in AEW with Omega. Oh my God! The stuff he could do, I'd love to see him do it. But it yeah. sounded like it sounded like we were getting drowned out by the people who were WWE all the way, and then now it's like reversed, which is interesting. Yeah, um, I think the Daniel Bryan stuff. I think he he dropped a few hints when he was doing those interviews. They wanted to work with other companies. He wanted to have open relationships. And so that's the big reason why I think he's going to sign, if not has signed with w, uh, AEW, because he's been he's been saying he wants to do uh, stuff in Japan. He wants to, you know, do partnerships with other companies. And WWE is not going to give them give him that. Supposedly, that report of working with MLW and being open to work with New Japan, I you know I always felt like that was to keep him there. I now mm-hmm. I don't have any confirmation that that's what it was, but. That's what it always seemed like. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Toby throws out, I loved Kenny wearing the Cookie Monster shirt. Such a hint at Punk coming. Did I did I miss something about the Cookie Monster shirt with a connection to CM Punk? What did I miss there? Oh yeah, he had like a Cookie Monster shirt on. Of course, the you know it's it's a it's a subtle reference to uh, CM Punk, and he's done two at this point because uh, last week we it's like a subtle hint. <laughs> um, at CM Punk. Listen, at this point, I think I think Punk's coming. Like I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we could sit here and say allegedly, allegedly for Daniel Bryan and everybody else. I think CM Punk's a done deal. I do too. I can't wait. I can't wait. And listen, folks, if any of you are diehard WWE fans that refuse to watch AEW, that thinks New Japan is just not for your cup of tea, you hate Impact. You hate it when it was TNA. MLW sucks. Everything sucks except your WWE. Guess what? That's perfectly fine. You can do that all day long. It's okay with me, and Phil will tell you it's okay with him. Watch what makes you happy. If this other stuff we're talking about doesn't make you happy, you don't got to watch it, okay? A lot of us do. That's up to us. You don't have to watch anything. And by the way, just because a guy leaves that company doesn't mean Vince is the devil. Doesn't mean that company's all trying to take everybody to hell with them. It's just not a good fit. Creatively, they butt heads. It's not a good environment. Sometimes it's toxic, okay? Sometimes it's perfectly fine. We can all paint pictures of what we think's going on, but the truth is, unless you're behind that curtain, you don't know anything. And I think, Phil, I think I know I'd be a lot more happier if a lot of people in our respective field 
would remember that. Just because we hear things doesn't mean that hearing is the truth. That's all I'm going to rant on right now. So, Yeah, I mean, it's up to uh, anybody that reports anything, of course, to, you know, uh, vet their source and do all of their due diligence. Um, uh, putting out news like CM Punk is coming back is a pretty big news story. And I don't mm-hmm. think anybody that would report something like that would not uh, do everything that they needed to do to make sure that that there was some basis to that before. And again, to to go, I don't think this is an alleged thing. Nobody is watching this thing. I mean, for you to come out and sell out United Center two weeks notice and you're not squashing this thing like guys he's not going to be there so don't expect CM Punk right to, to say no comment uh you're not squashing this thing Punk hasn't said a word he hasn't squashed it I think it's happening and man wouldn't that just make them the biggest heels ever if there was never a deal in place and the whole thing was just they think he's coming cool let's sell it out I mean <laughs> can you that imagine Oh my God, that would be crazy. I mean, <laughs> I think that would, yeah. I I hope they're not doing that. That you talk about losing a part of your fan base, and then then Tony Khan is presented as Mister Khan, and he's a mustache trolling villain with a power suit and walking <laughs> like this down to the ring. I don't want to see it. <laughs> it comes out. Uh, uh, Code of personality comes on, and he walk comes walking out. It was me all along. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's got to have a hood on. <sighs> yeah, it's got to do that. He's That's got, great. Yeah, he's got a Blackhawks hoodie on. He just whips the, oh! it was me. It was me all along. He comes out, gets on one knee, does the thing on the floor. And then when he goes to do that, oh, my God. Now I want that to happen. That would actually be very entertaining to me. Yeah. I, oh, you're talking about getting booed. Oh, my God. Sandy, brother, come back when you can stay longer. Sandy's awesome. Everybody tell Sandy, have a great weekend. Um. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, we'll see what happens. I, I'm with you. I, I feel pretty confident he's coming back. Let's talk about stuff that we can know and we can actually prove right now in front of us. Nikki, who they insist on calling ASH and not Ash because for reasons. Nikki, ASH, defeats Charlotte. It felt like that thing was getting over pretty well with the crowd. How was it received live? Oh, I, th- I think the crowd was into it. It was a really good main event. Um, I think Nikki really needed the win. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't have anything really bad to say about the match. Uh, there are certain parts of it where, you know, our girl Charlotte, I just, I just wish she would sell the offense a little bit better than she does. Uh, you know, I don't want to dump on her. Um, there are a lot of people that do that online, but I just wish sometimes she would sell her opponent's offense a little bit better. It just doesn't look good. (laughs) Mm, Good call. Um, I'll give her this. She is her facials and whatnot are, are she's gotten a lot better with when she tried the one foot pin and it didn't work and she just her whole face dropped and the camera closed up on her. It, that was pretty good stuff. Like she's got such a megalomaniacal, egotistical character, and then when she doesn't get her way, you can just see like this disbelief wash over her, like that didn't work. I can't believe it didn't work. Um it seemed like online response was pretty good to this match too. Yeah. Um, I, dude, I still think they're force feeding the Nikki thing. I feel like if they keep force feeding, they're going to kill her. I just, maybe I'm yeah. wrong, man. I, I think she's a good baby face. And I, I, you know, she's, she's such a nice um, person, you know, and she just has, you know, a good um, attitude about everything, you know, you never see her down on herself. You never see her down on, you know, what they're doing. It's not a lot of complaining. It's just like, you know, I'm here to do a job and, you know, I want to succeed. You know, she's really embraced being a, a good guy and embraced, you know, having children look up to her. And I think that's all. I think that's all great. Um, I just think they have to stick to this and give her meaningful wins. If it's just a fluke uh, money in the bank win, it's not enough to get people to cheer for her. I agree with that. Uh, Ray, with a valid point, Nikki is coming off like the softest champ. She's taking massive beatings and gets cheap wins. In yeah. other words, getting by by the skin of her teeth, maybe. I mean, um, I don't know if I would call her soft. She took a pretty <laughs> nasty uh, table bump and came back to win that match. Uh, 
I, I, you know, I think she's going to take that kind of beating because Charlotte's so much bigger than her, and Charlotte is like a uh, twenty-five thousand time champion. Uh, yeah, so I get it. I mean, I just think, like I said, she has to get past that though. You can't always have her, you know, narrowly survive her victory though. Yeah, uh, you can do it some. You can't do it all the time because yeah, it'll start to affect the way people see her toby with a good question do you think that charlotte is told to no sell you think she's told hey that's know. interesting i don't know um but she does it quite often um i don't know uh that seems counterproductive yeah and you know i maybe it's not intentional i just don't know i don't i don't know i don't want to i don't want to dump this in anybody's lap and i don't know anything uh, well, there you go. Uh, and, you know, that's a great answer. We could speculate all day, but if we don't really know, we'll just, folks will tell you. Alyssa with a question. We're going to get to the rain stuff shortly, but I thought I'd throw it up. Do you see John Cena beating Roman for a 17 title? Uh, SummerSlam has Seth Rollins turn. All right, we'll get there, folks. No worries. Uh, Alyssa, I don't, I don't get to, I don't, I don't see you all that much on the show here. I wanted to throw your comment up, but no worries. Um, Shannon says, I hope with Rampage, we get more women's matches. I think we yes. will. Yes. Um, there are a lot of women's matches on YouTube. There are a lot of women's matches on Dark and Other Faith. Uh, we need more of that on TV. And um, I think that is one of the weakest points about Dynamite every week is that there are not uh, consistent women's matches. And, you know, a lot of times when we do get women's matches, they're good. But it just needs to be more consistent. I don't know why Jay's not wrestling on television anymore. That's very strange to me. Maybe they're afraid. Um, if they keep this winning streak going with her, that the call will be to put the title on her. You just put the title on Britt. So maybe you just don't want to sandbag Britt too soon. I don't know. But there's got to be a better way than just not having her on TV or doing these backstage segments. I agree. Uh, kids, while you're here, I'm going to ask you again to hit the thumbs up and the heart button on the show. I very much appreciate it. Um, let's get to some more things that happened this week. Shifting to the blue brand now. Sasha comes back and turns heel? What? Only the person in the women's division you can't trust the most is Sasha Banks. I can't say, I, well, I see it coming. But when she went and hugged her after the save, I think we all thought, she's going to drop her, isn't she? And then when she didn't drop her, you're like, maybe she won't drop her. Then she dropped her later. Um, I mean, it just feels like and I, I love both these women, but it feels like they're going right back to what they did before. I guess that's fine, but what do you think about the whole Banks coming back and, and they're going to do this thing to get again? What do you think? Boy, they needed Sasha Banks really bad to, to start that segment and have Selena come out. And listen, I think Selena's great. Uh, she has no reason to challenge for a title. She has lost every match since she came back. She has no she has no heat on her to go, hey, let me let me challenge for the title. And then you have Carmella come out who has lost three matches. Do something else. Do something else. Like, if you're going to put um, Selena in the title picture, build her up to that. Um, there's been absolutely nothing to make me believe that she could beat Bianca. Uh, so I was like, oh, God, no. And so when Sasha came running out, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> 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 thank God. Uh because hey, nobody thinks either of the either of them are going to beat Bianca. Like, there's no suspense there. Um, and that's the company's fault for putting them in that spot. Yeah, um, and I, I just think they've been caught with their pants down a little bit since Bailey got hurt. They just really need another top heel for Bianca to go against. And yeah. it, so it made perfect sense to bring Sasha back, especially for SummerSlam. You're going to need a big match. And I'm sorry, but Bianca versus Selena is not a big match for SummerSlam. And we don't want to see Bianca versus Carmella again at SummerSlam. It's like, mm. you know, getting a rematch from WrestleMania is the best way to go. And I know, folks, I just made the speech earlier about if you love WWE and nothing else, it's fine. And it's still fine. But let me say this. This reminds me of the kid that breaks all his toys and then complains he doesn't have toys to play with. When you have these talents, when you have these workers and you book them 50-50 or worse, and then you need somebody in a pinch, you've got nobody in a pinch. So you go out to Goldberg or you maybe 
Not that Sasha was brought back before she's ready, but let's say she was because they can't think of anything else. Yeah. That's the problem. Absolutely. Um, and they've, they've just brought so many women to SmackDown, but it just seems like we're still doing very similar matches. So, uh, you know, I'm glad Sasha's back. Um, got a great reaction. And, you know, she's one of those wrestlers that they have that is a definite star. So they definitely need her star power to sell SummerSlam. Very much so. Molly with a good point. Mia Yim and Naomi, where are you? Good yeah, point. I mean, where is Mia Yim? Where is Naomi? Where are the two women that just came up from NXT? Shati and Tegan. Where is Tony Storm? It's like she was there and then a week later, gone. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Shannon called it as well. Um, something else big on the blue brand. John Cena versus Finn Balor. Uh Baron Corbin. What? No. John Cena. Why? I mean, we we complain that Finn doesn't get stuff. And then when Finn looks like he's going to get stuff, we still complain. What is, is, is it going to be a triple threat? Is that what we're looking at? They're just trying to find a way to get no. back to it. What's going on? I don't think it's going to be a triple threat. I think, I think having Finn come back and challenge was the right thing to do, but I don't, because everybody is so plugged in, at least most people online are plugged in. Everybody knew the match was John versus Roman. So it, it, at that point, it became, how do we get there now that we have Finn in there without having Finn lose? And so their way of doing it with this really bizarre contract signing segment, I I didn't get it. So it was, it, I think the funniest line about it that I saw was uh, Pat McAfee um, going over the replay of it of Corbin coming out there and beating down Finn and stealing the corp stealing the uh, contract and then McAfee's like you can't steal Finn's contract here comes John Cena and then John Cena beats him down and he steals his contract it's like yo know, Corbin can't do it but Cena can <laughs> what <laughs> uh this is side note are you feeling this Corbin stuff because I see people online going Oh, I didn't think I'd say it, but I love it. Dude, are you feeling any of this? No. <laughs> no. I, I thought I, mean, I was the only one that wasn't. I, I mean, I knew it was all I knew it was all a con. I knew all of this feel bad for me stuff. He was eventually gonna do something heelish again. Um, he's just a great heel. You're not gonna make him a good guy. So I knew he was going to play Patsy long enough to do something horrible. And I guess this is it, trying to sneak into the main event by uh Signing your name to a contract that is not drafted for you, which kids, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. That doesn't work. <laughs> you can't just put your name on any contract and then they have to honor it. That just doesn't work. Um, and that was the other funny thing about it. Um, you have authority figures there. Cena comes down there and signs his name on, on the on the contract that has Finn's name on it. And they just go, eh, what's the problem? We're, that's the match now. No, it's not. <laughs> you're, you're the authority figure here. That's not the match. That's Finn's match. With a blue Sharpie. Yeah, and yeah, the way he signed his name was like how Krusty signed his name with like like all caps letters and like the, the stars. <laughs> I almost thought, well, just make it a red pen so it's it's not even legal. Because you can't sign in red ink. Isn't that how it works for a contract? It has to be blue or black, I think is what yeah, technically you can't sign the in red ink. Uh-huh. There you go. Wouldn't that have been awesome if he just did a red Sharpie? We're all going, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, kids, welcome in the comments section this time. Tag himself, Troy Anthony Grant from the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. The contract signing statement was nonsense. I'm so confused. You weren't the only one, my friend. Yeah, I just I just was sitting there the whole time. Like, I'm not sure you could do this. I'm not sure you could do this. And that turned into me laughing for the next 10 minutes. Because I was like, he really stole uh, Finn's contract. And to shout out to our guy that got released, Bray Wyatt was always right about John Cena. He's not a good person. That's why the Firefly Funhouse happened. Bray Wyatt was right. <laughs> there you go. And everybody talking about wanting to see John in some sort of NWO thing. Kids, No, that's I, not. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but sometimes gimmicks should be left dead. Just, yeah. let, them, just let them go. The NWO was fun while it lasted for a while until it got to be extremely bloated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just leave it alone. No, um, we're not getting John out of his colorful baby face t-shirts. I'm telling you, when I was at Raw, that was the shirt I saw the most. 
somehow the guy has only been back for what two weeks and he already has the top selling shirt in the company that's why he's not doing good wo kids that's why yeah. it's not gonna happen yeah good call shane i'm gonna try to make heads or tails of this my friend do you think a different promoter could actually change WWE and compete with AEW right now with the talent WWE has right now. I'm so confused by this comment. Um, well, I, they, I don't think it's a matter of if they're competing with AEW. I think it's a matter of AEW attempting to compete with WWE because WWE is the biggest company in the world. Um, and, you know, I say very loosely competing with WWE because it's kind of like they're creating their own thing and being an alternative. Um, and, you know, I know what Cody said this week, but, you know, still, WWE is not going anywhere. It's still <laughs> the biggest game in town. Yeah. Yeah. And, what you know, we don't have to get too far in the weeds on this, but, you know, clearing clearing cap space kids when you clear enough cap space you're either going to try to sign the the biggest player in the league the most expensive player in the league or you might be doing something to the team what's the chances they're clearing the decks and getting rid of these big money contracts because something's behind the scenes that none of us know about i mean are is this yeah. company changing at some point are they downsizing are they morphing into something else i mean ugh. yeah i mean yeah i i there's definitely something going on Behind the scenes, whether that's uh, we need less personnel, our contract, our our uh, roster has gotten a little bit too big. I can see it. It all makes sense. Maybe they're just uh, you know going, hey, let's just throw as many people out there and see if they'll sign them. Ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but I that, there's definitely something going on with the company because I mean we've never seen this many releases back to back, and not just this many releases, just guys that you would assume are safe like i i would assume ron Strowman is a safe guy i would assume bray is safe apparently bray uh was on the list of guys to release with the last releases that's the rumor and they yeah. took him off and they kept you know talking themselves out of it um so i don't know i don't know what's going on yeah, it's it's uh I I don't get it either. It doesn't make any sense to me, but like you said, there's something going on. There may there may be an evil con in the wrestling business, but it could be Nick Con, not Tony Con. And that's the guy that supposedly is in charge of doing all the head cutting at Vince's behest in that company. Again, kids, you go off what you hear, not what you know. So that's what we're being led to believe is this guy that they've got, Nick Con is the one in charge of saying, Hey pal, boss says it's done. You're done. Get out. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Um, let's talk about ratings, kids. This week's SmackDown, 2 million compared to 2.13, a slight drop from last week. Raw up just a scoosh, 1.82 from 1.81. There's your ratings for the red and blue brand. Pretty much steady where they are. Let's talk about some AE dub. Cody Rhodes, and I wrote a comment about this last night. Last night? Yesterday. Um, about Cody... Out of the blue, Phil, taking his boots off after the Malachi Black match, main event of Dynamite. What do you make of all this? He's not going anywhere. He's not retiring. <laughs> He's not retiring yet. I I really enjoyed what they did with this match. I think having uh, Black win definitively and squash Cody was the way to go. Make Malachi look like a big threat. Um, uh, don't, you know... You have no reason to slow into this thing. Most wrestling fans know who the guy is. You don't have to introduce him. It just, it just, just push the guy to the moon. You don't need to, you don't need to slow this thing down. I had made perfect sense to me. As for him taking his boot off at the end, I think this is just a way for him to try and have a moment to create some storyline afterwards. And then I love Black going like, "No, you don't get to take this moment. You don't get to try and make this about you. Get out of here." <laughs> Uh, and this could have been as, and I, the column I wrote, I speculated on both points, whether this is the real deal and he is legit stepping away, maybe not forever, but for a while, which it could be, or this was all just to get him over and either way is fine. Either way works. Um, it looked like black had everybody in his pocket, but dude, when he hit him with that crutch, they, he turned that crowd, dude, they were cheer, They were booing him. And I'm like, I love that pro wrestling still works. And I love that it works in the company that they all claimed heels and faces don't matter anymore. Not true. It worked. Yeah. And I, I think that's a big part of it too. 
Black is clearly supposed to be a heel here. And a lot of people were cheering because they wanted him to beat Cody. Um, you know, giving him something and allowing him to turn the crowd, that makes a ton of sense. You don't have anybody as menacing and dark as Black and then try to make him a baby face. You know, just make him a heel. Yeah. Uh, Dave says, sorry I'm late. No worries, Dave. You're we, we got a little bit of time left. Troy says, Cody turns heel, comes back with dyed black hair, and joins the House of Black faction. The House of Black faction. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think he's going to be off TV for a while, if I had to guess. Okay. Um, probably the right call. Um, I don't know. I, I see a lot of people saying he should turn. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it makes sense in some ways for him to turn, but yeah. they've got so many heels at the top of their card right now. True. I, I don't know if having him come out there and start doing like the goofy stuff with the elite works for his character. I think those three guys can do that together because that's what they've always done. Um, and they just have such chemistry doing it together because they're real friends. And that's yeah. not to say that they're not friends with Cody. Um, but there was a lot of stuff he said in that in that uh, promo. I don't know. A lot of people were talking about him taking the shoe off, but I thought it was more interesting that he seemingly confirmed that the EVPs are arguing. And I was like, hmm. And I don't, of course, he's probably working. Um, but yeah. at the fact that he threw that in there, I was like, interesting. And, you know, I feel I don't know where your head's at, but I, I'll, I'll get your take here and I'll, we'll see what everybody else thinks about this. But uh, this whole time, I've not been waiting for this company to fail. Please don't misunderstand me. I want them to succeed as I do all these companies. To be fair, I do. However, I think we've all, from the moment they started, been kind of waiting to go, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And then when they have a good show, okay, great. That's another feather in the cap. Great. That's good. They sold out. Great. And you just keep waiting. It's almost as if a whole lot of people are going, ah, what about next year? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. They're not thinking that way in that company. They're thinking long-term, future, future. And Cody's promo really brought that home to me personally. Like, is there a part of him that's already going, look, this company's going to outlast me. That's the plan. And, and the plan is to hand it off. And suddenly in my head, I'm going, wow, we're talking – we're not talking this is a flash in the pan. Let's make a bunch of money as soon as we can. Then we're close it up. No, this is – they've got plans to keep this thing around for a good long time. That that kind of changes my headspace. Did you take all that in when he said it? Yeah, I think he's definitely setting his flag in the sand of going like, you know, and that's why I mentioned earlier him saying, you know, we're not an alternative anymore. We're competition. And, hmm. You know, there's so much stuff he said there. There's so much stuff to digest there other than him, you know, seemingly retiring. And I think him taking his boot off has been the big, you know, byline here. But he said a lot in that promo. Yes, and did. I'm just, you know, I, I know that he is unpopular in some circles. But I would argue that he's done more for the health of that company and to help big stars move ahead than anybody. Um I mean, it's shoot. Darby's not where he is right now without Cody. True. Um, Sammy Black, Guevara. Sammy Guevara, Black, uh, MJF. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Brody Lee. Uh, Brody he's Lee? he's yeah. put all those guys over. Um, I mean, for everybody yelling, he just wants to get all the glory. It's always his moment. He, he explicitly gave up the chance to fight for a world title. And it doesn't look like he has any plans on going back on that. So I don't know. I think that's part of what makes him saying, you know what? I, I can step back and be in the back for a while and let <laughs> let all these other stars come in and take the reins at this point. Like we I've got the I've got the ship going. I've pushed it off <laughs> off yeah. of the uh off of the pier at this point. So let somebody else steer it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and in their world, he can't, like you said, in their world, he can't challenge for the title. And plus, Brody squashed him. Black squashed him. He's willing to do the job when when it's the right thing. What's the problem there? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think some people just don't like him. And, mm -hmm. hey, you know, teach their own. Um, but, you know, I think some of the takes about him not, you know, doing what's best for the company – and not doing what's best for some of their stars. I mean, shoot, we don't talk about enough 
how much he put Jay Gar- Cargill over in that in that match as well. Good point. I, I but I mean, using that match, I mean, because at first it looked like it was going to be a, just a, a match with him and Brandy versus um, Shaq and Cody, and I think the fact that he kind of introduced people to Jade in a big way and introduced Red Velvet to people in a big way because of that match. Mm -hmm. I just don't think he gets enough credit for stuff like that. Um, Now, again, don't agree with everything he does. Some of his promos are a little bit long-winded, but (laughs) I think he's done great things. Um, Robbie with a good point. Cody is, there you are. Cody is 36, too young to retire. I agree with you to a point, Rob. However, I will counter with this. It's a great thing to be 50, I would imagine, as a wrestler and wake up and be able to walk with little to no pain. So, um, a lot of guys can't say that. A lot of guys wake up in the morning and it's it's a struggle to get their feet over the side of the bed. They can function. Maybe they're still working, but it's a struggle. Uh, most of these guys, a lot of these guys still are going to live with pain for the rest of their life. for Till the end, they're always going to have pain. I mean, I don't know if Rock is there. I would think maybe... I can't speak for rock. Who knows? Um, he's still a very physical guy, but you know, get out when the getting's good and save your body. I mean, it's feel to me, it's the same thing as being like a, a running back in the NFL. At some point you got to start thinking long-term. I want my legs to work 20 years from now. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And then we don't know what else he has going. He could have some other ventures going where, you know, maybe he needs to step away and do, more mainstream stuff. I don't know. I, he, he was trying to do some acting for a while. I don't know if the political thing is still happening. I don't think we want it, but you know, (laughs) yeah. Um, we talked about a little bit already, but Britt Baker versus red velvet's going to be a thing coming up next Friday on the first edition of rampage. We'll see what happens there. Um, uh, I don't know that we imagine Velvet winning this match, but I think her coming out and getting Baker's face was a nice little spot. I mean, what's your take on this match? How do you think it's going to go? Um, I think it's going to be a good match. I think Red Velvet is going to give her a good challenge. Um, she's been on a pretty good winning streak. Um, of course, you have to watch Dark and Elevate to see that, um, unfortunately. But I I like Red Velvet a lot. Every time she gets a big match, she impresses me. I thought she was really impressive in the one-on-one match she had with Cargill. Um, and, you know, if you've seen any of her stuff outside of AEW, like her match with uh, La Rosa for Mission Pro, really good match. I think she's going to be a future uh, world champion, but not next week. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I didn't much care for the words enhancement talent being used. That kind of suggests, well, I wasn't supposed to beat you before, but now they think I'm a contender, so now maybe I can beat you. That kind of peels the curtain back a little too far for me. This is 2021 pro wrestling where everything's peeled back. I get it. What am I complaining about? But I thought maybe that was that could have been worded better. Like, like, well, that was different, honey. I just got here. That's not. I'm not the same person I was then. I don't know something. Yeah, not maybe so. But I, I do like how she uh, delivers her promos. I do think she brings a lot of fire mm-hmm. when she does her promos. Um, I, I think in some of those segments uh, leading to the Shaq match, she stole some of those segments. Um, and I think she showed a lot of that uh, this week as well. Uh, Ray, we've talked this to death, my friend. Baker is full heel when you can see the fans love her. Makes no sense. I completely agree. And I'll give it to the company for not forcing anything because I don't think they're forcing anything. I don't. I mean, apart from her promos, have they really forced Britt down your throat as a heel? It doesn't feel like it. So if they're yeah. just letting it play out, I think I'm okay with that. It's weird to look at, but I don't know, dude. It's not ruining it for me anyway. No, and I, I think – but see, the thing is, I think she's so good at doing the heel stuff that I think she's going to eventually do more of it. If the match is, is with Rose at All Out, she's going to be a heel in that match. So, I agree. Toby says, "Do you think Ruby Riot actually Ruby Soho now?" Uh, we've heard down the grapevine that she has signed with AEW. We'll see. Ruby Soho gets an immediate. I don't think it's immediate. I mean, no, dude, she's so good. She's so good. Like, we'll see what happens. But man, she'd be a great addition to that locker room. Yeah, I mean, she is definitely somebody that I think is an underrated talker. 
Yeah. So um, I think she's going to do well there in terms of promo work. And she's a good wrestler. Uh, mm-hmm. It just, she's just one of those, um, one of those people they released that I just could not figure out why they could find more for her to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Um, I wanted to throw this up at you. Christian Cage is being declared the new number one contender. And I threw this up just to be throwing it up and talking about it. Is that going to put him in direct conflict at some point and maybe keep him and Paige busy at some point? I mean, are we still looking at Paige and Omega for All Out? Or are they? Is that going to change things to Punk? Are we looking at Punk and Omega for All Out, for God's sake? And they'll keep Heyman busy with Christian, perhaps. Maybe they're starting to switch the turn the tables here. What do you think? I don't think that they would bring Punk in and put him straight in a title match. Um, because at that point, you're handcuffing yourself. He has to win at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, because all out in Chicago, he has to win at that point. Like, you, you just don't want to do that. And then that kind of adds fuel to the fire to anybody thinking, okay, Punk's going to come in and jump straight to the front of the line. You don't want to You don't want to do that. Um, Would he want to do that, you think? Yeah, and I mean, to just the optics of it all, to seemingly... Uh, cool off hangman just to put punk straight in a title match nah, i don't like that that that's not a good look um i it seems like hangman is got something going later this month it, i think that's what i read and maybe that's why he's not in the title match at all out um they're saying he might miss all out um i've not heard this but toby said uh he's got a baby on the way soon maybe that's yeah. what's going on yeah he does um so Maybe that's why they pulled him out. Um, I don't know. I don't mind waiting for the Page match, but Page has to be the guy that beats Omega at this point. Yeah, um, I agree. You, you've put you put too much um, story investment into this. Uh, you've invested too much screen time into it. Hangman has to be the guy. Um, do I think pa- Cage versus uh, Omega is a good replacement? Maybe. I don't think anybody thinks Christian's going to beat Omega, though. <laughs> And I, I'm not going to mention the name, but I, I heard another uh, podcaster uh, a couple of days ago talking about, well, the match will be okay. And I'm like, I'm getting a little sick, Phil, of people downplaying Christian like the guy can't do anything. I personally think him and Omega could have a great match. I don't think Chris goes over, no. but man, I I think it would be an excellent match. Personally, I think it would be. No, I think they can have a good match. And I mean, this is Omega... Omega, you know, not to throw any shade at Sammy Callahan, but he got a great match out of Sammy Callahan at the Impact Show. Um, he's he's been able to elevate everybody he's in there with, and it's not like you need to do that much to elevate Christian. He's nah. been to the top of the mountain several times. Yeah, God, he. I know it's a WWE trope, but I really want him to go. All I need is just one more match. I love that so much. I just. What a great that was just such a fun time for him. I don't know if he would if he would feel this way, but for me personally, that was such a fun time when he was spitting on Randy and taking the belt from him. And people may have had a different memory of that, but I really enjoyed his work during that time. Dennis says, Do you think AEW should split rosters on different shows? No. Never. Never. I'm not for it. I don't like brand split. You ask me, I'm telling you, I hate it. Talk about handcuffing yourself. You're doing it with that. And I just don't know. Because the fun part about this company, John Mosley shows up on Elevation. <laughs> what? Yeah, it happened. Darby showed up on Dark. I mean, dude, they can insert guys wherever they want to and give you reason to watch that other show. I, to me, that's what makes this company maybe not. Well, they're more exciting than everybody else. I'm not saying that. But, I mean, I'm saying it they're keeping it fresh and they're keeping it to where you feel like you have to watch all their programming or you might miss something. I personally love that dude. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think you want to have the same people on both shows. Hmm. Um, it's already very repetitious as it, as it is. I don't think you want, you want to have the same handful of stars on both shows. And Dennis, that's not, I'm not trying to crap on you, my friend. Um, uh, but that's just my take. Uh, he did point out also if they were to go a WWE route, it'd be too many titles. You better believe it. Um, I think it's watered down WWE. I'm not. I wasn't against it. I'm still not necessarily against it, but I do think it's watered down. Um, let's see. Chris asks, "Who is Moxley's partner going to be versus the Good Brothers? Wouldn't it make sense if it's Kingston?" Yeah, it's got to be Kingston. 
Yeah. Could they could be somebody else. You never know with that company, dude. Uh something else that happened on Dynamite. Little Layla Hirsch, which I'll never call her to her face because she might make me tap, uh, is gonna face Camille at NWA Empower. That tweet was awesome and where she threatened to kick her butt. Okay. Man, I was talking to you uh last night, I think before we did the six M about Layla, the way she moves in the ring, she's so confident. And if she's not confident, buddy, she sure comes off that way. She just seems like she's in the zone when she, when that bell rings, man. I think this is going to be a good match. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great match. Uh, I really like uh, the style Layla works. Um, and I think she's unique. Nobody else in that division wrestles like Layla does. And so I think this is a good opportunity for her. Um, I think it power is going to be a good show based off what I've seen so far. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to be there, aren't you? I'm going to be there. I'm traveling awesome. to be there. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a good spot for her. Uh, of course, uh, I get back soon to Serena. She was supposed to get this match, but she's injured. I think, um, yeah. And Camille is great. I saw a lot of people saying, who is Camille? She like, who is this tall statue of woman? Camille is fantastic. If you're not watching NWA, guys, she is fantastic. She uh, She's really gotten better. She's really progressed also. Um, we didn't get to see a whole lot of it because all she was was just with Nick Aldis for the longest time and didn't really – she never spoke or anything. We never saw her work. And then she started getting physical in the ring and then come to find out, well, she can work. So, no, I think, I think it's going to be fine. I think it'll uh, – I think she'll impress a lot of people. I'm looking forward to that show. Um, I'm really anxious to watch it. Uh, let's see. Bah, 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 bah. Toby says the size difference was crazy. I didn't realize it was that big either. Plus, Camille was in heels, wasn't she? So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, she was wearing heels. Uh, but, yeah, I I like stuff like that in wrestling. I like to see, you know, big size differences and the stories you can tell with that. So I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do too. I think it's going to be nice. Um Let's see. I got one more thing for you, kids, and we're going to get out of here and take it home. Uh, Jericho versus Hoovy. Hoovy Juice. Hoovy to Guerrera. He came out of that, that tunnel. I was like, oh, my God, he's in tremendous shape. Yeah, he looked fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah. Took these guys a minute to get going. Uh, yeah. Wasn't uh, wasn't a lot of chemistry at first. Uh, yeah. I was like, slow down for, for Jericho, Hoovy. You don't you had to show off too much for the network crowd. We, we know you still got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it ended up being a, a solid match. I uh, like the finish more than I expected. I oh, thought man. the flying uh, Judas effect was a good way to go. Oh. Um, yeah. So uh, I was I was impressed with the match. Uh, the only problem with it is you 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 uh, kind of shot yourself to the moon with this. Uh, you go straight from Nick Gage to moving to, and now there's like, okay, here's Wardlow. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I would have been okay with that had they announced that first. Had they announced, you got to get through whoever and whoever, I'll tell you later. But you know to get to me. You got to get through the guy that's always at my right hand. And yeah. maybe announce that first. And then, I don't know, dude. I kind of felt like, have they done enough with Wardlow, you think? I guess the answer is yes. Have they done enough with him to make you believe Wow, this is going to be a rock that Jericho is going to come up against, you know? No, I don't think they have. Um, I mean, of course, I just uh, MJF being special guest referee, uh, that gives him a chance to win. But other than that, I think we know Warlow. Now, supposedly, MJF's not the special guest ref. Uh, supposedly, Jer- uh, uh, Jim Ross said that, but that was not what was announced. He just assumed that was the case, and no one corrected him. <laughs> and then they made, yeah, they made a point to circle back around. I think at the end of the at the end of the match or whatever, and say that MJF will be out there, but he won't be. So he's like an enforcer. I I don't know. I don't. That's. I mean, maybe he's just gonna do commentary. Why would he make a point to tell everybody? He's I mean, been doing commentary anyway, so yeah. I have to assume it's like he's gonna be in the ring in some way or by the ring. I don't know. Oh man, let me just tell you that Judas effect off the top rope. Was worth was worth every bit of that match. That timing was impeccable. Oh my god, it looks so good. Like it's probably not a practical move for him all the time, 
But man, I was insanely impressed with that. And it looked good too. Looked really good. Let's talk about ratings. For four weeks in a row, AE Dub has broken the 1 million mark. This is a big deal, kids. Um, I, you know, uh, again, and listen, no one suggests, you know what this means by God, that Vince Barry look out. No one's saying that. So everybody relax. This is a big deal, Phil. I, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but dude, if they make, not, uh, if whatever, right? If it's a big word, two letters, huge word. If they maintain a million and then Punk gets there and the first dynamite that Punk's on, they hit a million and a half. I mean, are we looking at 2022? We're looking at a, a 2 million. I mean, I, I'm just throwing it out there. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, man. 2 million is going to be a big, it's going to be a big hump to get over. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, man. It's just so many things with ratings. It's because, you know, the ratings is always okay. When you get to this milestone, then it's, then it's just another one. And once you get to that milestone, how do you keep it? How do you sustain it? Um, and I think that's my fear with punk coming back because they're going to get a huge rating boost when he yeah. comes back, but is it sustainable? Mm. Are you going to keep laps fans that might come in to see punk for that week? Are you going to keep them watching? I don't know. That's a, that's a million dollar question here. The question is, do they have enough to keep them there as a, as a fan who's biased? Cause I enjoy their product. I would say they've got plenty to keep you there. There's familiar faces you remember from the Attitude Era and before. So there's there's younger kids. There's kind of stuff for all ages, for all tastes. I mean, to me, dude, it feels like they've got enough to keep the casual fan hooked. I mean, we'll see how it plays out. There's your ratings, kids. Guess what it's time for? We've opened the floor, great, big, and wide. Mind the hole. Don't fall through it. Sugar Shane says, Tom, who was a better partner with Bobby Eaton, Dennis Condry or Stan Lane? I personally liked him with Dennis. To me, Stan was better with Steve Kern as the Fabulous Ones. That's tough for me, man. I love Sweet Stan. Because um, at first it was Dennis and... Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was Dennis and Randy Rose. And Bobby actually teamed with somebody else. I forget the guy's name. Um, I don't know. I, I like Dennis. Dennis, by the way... Used the word underrated earlier. Dennis Condry, an extremely underrated uh, mind for the business. Extremely smart. He had the 80s body. Wasn't much to look at, but man, a very smart worker. Um, I don't know. I'm, I might be partial to Stan because he was such a showboat. I really enjoyed that. Dude, are you familiar enough to Midnight Express to have a preference of one guy over the other? Uh, No, I don't think I do. Um. Yeah, I think for me it's Stan. Although I, I my first Midnight Express was Loverboy Dennis. Ray, I can always count on you, my friend. Gangstar are mob deep, and with Westbrook on the Lakers, can they win the ship? Also, when Adam Cole wins, always. Now he wants Cole to win the AEW title. Can I FaceTime you and do the happy dance? Okay, so Adam Cole probably not going to be WWE champion or Universal champion unless they make a last-minute bid to keep him there and promise him the world. Dude, I can envision Cole as AEW world champion. I can completely envision it. I don't know if I see him beating Omega, but dude, this is a title I think he could most definitely win and be plausible and believable 100%. I, I think that uh, there is a lot of money behind Adam Cole versus Hangman Page at some point. That is a match mm -hmm. that I think would get over huge. And if you bring in Adam Cole, I mean, of course he's going to get cheered eventually. He could get, get cheered at first, but yeah, he's he's just at his best as a heel. Like he just really is. is. Um uh and for a question, I'm gonna go with Gangstar. Big fan of of uh Guru and, and Primo. Um yeah, I'm gonna go with Gangstar on that one. Um I don't know, man. Seemed like I was being a little bit mean to you last week, Ray. Might have had a little bit of a point. Just gonna say that. <laughs> ah, see, see, we all try to play nicer, kids. And Ray, because we love you. And because you bought merch, everybody, Ray bought a shirt. If you haven't bought a shirt, shame on you. Ray gets a button. That's for you, Ray. I put a ribbon around that sucker and everything. That's all yours, man. You kidding me? 
Uh, let's see. Bah, 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 bah. Toby says, Phil, can you tell the Bears to trade my Cowboys, Nick Foles, or our backups are hot garbage? Uh, you guys can have Nick Foles if you want him. I promise you, I do not want him. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Shannon don't have an open four question. Shan- Shannon just wants to hear something. Camera grass. There we go. There we go. You think that'd be enough, but it's not. You know why? You can kiss my grin. <laughs> I love that picture so much. Um, Dennis says, "How can I buy a shirt?" Oh, Dennis, I'm so glad you asked. Tiny, say it with me, kids. Tinyurl.com slash Tom Cart Pods P O D S. Tinyurl.com slash Tom Cart Pods P O D S. The links are on my pages. They're everywhere. Go check them out. Get you a shirt. Get you a mug. Get you a magnet. Guess what's coming soon on the Red Bubble? Hats! Shut up! You can get a hat. I'm so excited. I may be getting a hat. Don't wear a hat. Your hair falls out. But wear a hat anyway because it's going to have my logo on it. Ray has a shirt because Ray's freaking awesome. Toby's right, Phil. I need a DMD button. I got to make that happen. I got to make that happen. Such a good button. That'd be fun. Chris was always asking, Phil, you've got your ear to the grindstone, ear shoulder to the wheel, ear to the ground. I don't know. Um, anything ever on Kelly? Because, dude, I never hear anything about Kelly Klein anymore. I haven't heard anything. I don't know if she's still um, in that dispute with uh, Ring of Honor. I knew there was a legal dispute at one point. Um, and then she was also injured. So I don't know. I haven't heard anything, though. Well, I remember when all that stuff blew up with uh, Ring of Honor, man. It was not pretty. Yeah, Her and was... Joey Mercury both coming out and really revealing stuff from behind the scenes, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope she's doing better uh, health-wise. Um, and um, I think uh, she would be fantastic for anybody that's uh, looking for uh, to bring a woman in, I think. There's there's several places she could go, and she would uh, work perfectly. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, me neither. I like her a lot, too. It's funny because on the times we interacted on Twitter, it wasn't even about wrestling. It was about jazz. She's a Miles Davis and John Coltrane fan, so I would tag her and she would comment. We'd just talk about jazz. It's really weird. Um, Ray says I didn't answer the rap question. Can I be straight with you, Ray? I'm not familiar enough with either to know. And that's just me I just being straight. I feel like I know Mob Deep, but I can't swear I know any song. I know that sounds crazy, but yeah. You know Shook Ones. Thing. Come on. Everybody knows Shook Ones. Shook Ones. I think. I got to go on. educate myself. Ain't, ain't no such thing as half. Come on, man. No. You know? <laughs> I can't sing with you. I don't know it. I'm going to educate. I promise you, I'm going to go look stuff no, up. No. I, I yeah, don't, you, man. You know Shook Ones. If I play Shook Ones right now, you you know that in that beat at the beginning. The da, 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 da. I, Come I on, man. Know. It sounds familiar, but I don't know. I, uh, I'll look you, it up. You you've seen Eight Mile, right? Um, well, yeah, yeah. That that's the that's one of the beats that plays when in in the shelter and they're like getting ready to go into. You you know Shook Ones. I'm telling you, if I play it right now, you know it. I'm sure I would. Don't play it right now. We'll get kicked off the air. <laughs> uh, Chad with a big one. I'm sure you heard about this, but what did you think about last week's SmackDown Vince having booze sound over the air when Banks attacked the EST when the crowd was cheering? I didn't know that. Is that did they do that on SmackDown last week? I don't know. Um, I mean, they've been they've been piping in, uh, and I mean they've been trying to control the crowd at least for a while, and that's not even a new thing. So. Doesn't surprise me. I mean, most people are happy to see Sasha back, but I don't know. I, I feel like let the crowd naturally boo her, but you know, that, <laughs> Will trying to get us in all kinds of trouble. We can't play it, Will. They'll yank me off the air. Dude, I got a YouTube strike on something on a video I posted from an Evolve show I went to with my kid like two years ago. They suddenly put a strike on it, said it wasn't for kids. I'm like, what? And then, like, they shook their finger at me. And I'm like, okay, that came out of nowhere. I'll take the thing down. I don't care. Like, it's not like it was blowing up anyway. God bless. You can't do anything around here. Chris says, Phil, did you get tickets to AEW? 
I did. I will be at Rampage and I will be at All Out. There you go. Awesome. How's your seats? Good? Yeah. Pretty good yeah. seats. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we got. A uh, couple more here, kids, and we're going to get out of here. Dennis says, I'm thinking any company that wants big pops with surprising wrestlers better do it quick in case of COVID. Oh, man. Phil, you got tickets, Phil. Phil's got tickets. Phil, are you worried? Yeah. What's going to happen? I'm more worried about All Out than anything. Um, but that's why I believe that they tried to get uh, tried to get that uh, pop at the United Center. I think um, hedging their bets and getting a big venue like United Center closer to the date makes a lot of sense just in case by September they're trying to cancel shows. I don't know. Um, hopefully, you know, all out still happening, but if you can still get punk in front of a Chicago crowd before that, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, I agree. Well, kids, we're going to cross our fingers and hope that it doesn't come to that. Wear your stupid mask if asked to. Get the stupid vaccine. No one's sprouting a third eye. No one's walking funny. Everybody's fine for the most part. I don't care what anybody says. My show, I'll say what I want. Please, for God's sake, do the right thing for your family, your friends, and your neighbor. For good God Almighty's sake, don't quit being a friggin' doofus. That's the next catchphrase. Don't be a friggin' doofus. I want to say worse, but I'm not going to say worse. All right. Um, Shane, by God, we'll end with Sugar Shane. What Funko are you missing? Uh, Well, I wouldn't say I'm missing. It's an office space reference. Which one do you want is the hardest to find? You want to know the truth? That one right there. The CM Punk Pop is going for about 400 bucks. Wow. Uh, yeah, dude. He's in the, the black trunks with the red stars, and he's, he's standing like that. That's the one, if you want it, you're going to pay up. I've been so tempted before, but I'm not doing 400 bucks for a pop vinyl. So I'd love to put them back there on the shelf, front and center, but it's not happening. I do, however... Have to put up a new shelf because Phil, you weren't here when I showed him. You'll appreciate this all day long. There you go. Had to get the worm and had to get Pip. So there you go. They're still in the freaking boxes, man, because I got to put a freaking shelf up. I got random pops in boxes just hanging out everywhere. Homelander's in the hall. Run DMC are on the steps going upstairs. They're just hanging out because I haven't put a shelf up yet. So there you go. All right, let's get out of here, kids. Phil, please remind everyone where they can find you on the internet machine, my friend. Uh, you can follow me at Phil, Phil Do 616 If you like, uh, you can uh, follow my writing at Bleach Report and Daily DDT. There you go. Phil, thanks as always for joining me, my friend, and I will talk to you soon. Everybody tell Phil thanks for hanging out. Thank you, my friend. There you go, kids. Phil Lindsay in the house. Please go check out Tom Clark's 6M podcast by Crackle because you'll love it. You better because we love it. We have loads of fun doing it. We did a different kind of episode last night. We did regular show. So if any of you guys and gals out there like regular show, you're going to enjoy that episode. Uh, we didn't spend all day on it because uh, we just got to the point and took it home, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty cool. So yeah, goofball comedy at its finest, folks. So go check it out. Folks, I'm getting out of here. Listen, everybody, have a great weekend. Be sure to come back next week for the show. The week after, we will not be here because your boy's on vacation. Ha ha! Can't wait. Getting out of tune. Going to go do some fun stuff with the fam, so I can't wait for that. But we'll be here next week, I promise you. Uh, so be sure to check us out next week. I almost went Drew on you. It just suddenly go Drew. Look out. Yeah, I, I'm going to work on that one. Okay. So that's all I got for you folks. Thanks again for watching. As always, I do appreciate your business. And as soon as I find the right button, we're going to get ourselves out of here. You notice how I stall like crazy? There's the button. The uh, the uh, website here changed their uh, button layout. That's it, for, that's it for us, folks. I'm getting out of here. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Tom Clark's Main Event. <laughs>